Hello everybody, it is me, Jeremy Senpai, and I am bringing you yet another amazing video. It is Pride Month, everybody. Now, that one, that one month out of the year where you show off your pride of being who you are. Whether you're lesbian, bisexual, homosexual, gay, queer, not transgender, whatever. Oh, and non-binary too, we have to include that one. But anyway, it's been a very long journey for a lot of us, everybody. Especially when it comes to representation. Which is why, in honor of Pride Month, I will be doing a top 25 LGBT plus cartoon characters. And believe me when I tell you, this has been an uphill battle. But let me share a couple of interesting facts for you guys before I get started. For starters, after looking into this, I discovered I have over a hundred characters. That's right, that this was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. But but the rest of them let's just stick with twenty five. The the others they they can make another list in their time. Okay, now I'm gonna lay down a few rules for you. First of all, this has to be confirmed by show creator, a member of the staff, anybody, that this, now that the pairing or that the character is confirmed to be, now to be LGBT+. It can't be fan interpretation, it has to be confirmed, it has to be built up to, it has to be official, is what I'm trying to say everybody. That is the golden word right there, official. <clears throat> All right, I've rambled enough. Let's get on to it, everybody. They are here. They are queer. We love them for it. This is the top 25 LGBT plus cartoon characters. Number 25, Sheriff Lubbs and Deputy Durlin from Gravity Falls. Series creator Alex Hirsch mentioned in an interview that he wanted to include a gay character, but was afraid to do so on the kids show. These two lovable fools of police were always shown to be the best of friends with hints of there being something more behind it all. It was only in the series finale that it was confirmed that the sheriff and the deputy are in love. So sadly, get the bomb spot here due to it being saved for the last episode and not touched on earlier. But regardless, these two are very much beloved characters, and they so deserve each other, as well as their spot on this list. Number 24, Ray Gillette. Throughout the series run, Ray has always been a fan favorite character, thanks to his sassiness and at times being a comedic punching bag. Even after losing the use of his legs and becoming a cyborg, he's still proven to be a vital member of Team Archer, before he loses his legs again every other season finale. While he's still very much a beloved character, he sadly earns his spot here due to him being reduced to being a character who's used too much as a comedic fodder. But regardless, I felt that he deserves his spot here on this list. Ray Gillette will always be an integral character to Archer, and even after being reduced to a wheelchair every season finale, he is still very much a loved member of the team. Number 23, Rachel Bighead. In the 20-year anniversary special of Rocco's Modern Life, Static Cling, a lot has changed since the 90s one of them being Acceptance. In the special, it's revealed that Ralph Bighead, the son of Rocco's neighbors, is transgender and now goes by Rachel. This is a very real look into how someone trans can come out to their family, trying to get them to understand and even their reactions in the wake of the outing. In fact, the main conflict of the second half is Mr. Bighead disowning Rachel, unable to accept the change, but everything, of course, is resolved by the ending. I included Rachel here due to it being a modern spin on the classic show and just how real it displays an outing, something done very respectfully in my opinion. Number 22 Enid and Red Action from OKKO Let's Be Heroes. This was probably one of the most natural ways to address an outing on a children's program. 
because in the beginning it could also be seen as a means of friendship. Throughout the show, Enid wished to get closer to Red Action, the superhero from the future. They had three episodes devoted to building on their relationship, and every one of them is great in my opinion. But by the end of the last one, they confirmed their relationship with a kiss, albeit a very casual one, and even when we have a look into the future, we see that they're still together. I gave them the spot here because of how surprising it was, but I genuinely do wish that we got to see more of their relationship pan out. That's my only problem with this great ship, but otherwise, I'm glad that- Number 21, Matthew and Aiden. Big Mouth is rich with how kids enter puberty in many different ways. For Matthew, the first openly gay character who struggled to find a suitable relationship until he met Aiden in the Valentine's Day episode. Showing the awkward stages of having a crush and pursuing a relationship, including the struggles of being an openly gay teen with respect. It's no wonder the hormone monster considers Matthew to be his favorite kid. The show did do a little bit of comedic elements when it came to their relationship, but just the same, they did it in a very respectful way, in my opinion, and given, th and given the circumstances. Which is why these two boys have earned their spot here. Number 20. Double Trouble. The she reboot was rich with LGBT plus representation, one of which is the non-binary character Double Trouble. Introduced in Season 4, and they really stole the show, being the most entertaining character at that point. Very suitable for an actor. Not afraid to dish out some brutal truths too, especially to those they've come to understand. My personal favorite scene is when they call out Katra in the end of Season 4, and does so in a way that makes it harder for you to dislike them. Our favorite shapeshifter is without a doubt a standout character in this colorful cast of characters. Number 19. Harold and Howard McBride, or more commonly known as Clyde's Dads, from The Loud House. Breaking ground as Nickelodeon's first same-sex marriage on the children's show, but also one of its first interracial ones. Something rarely done even today. Two doting but loving dads to their son Clyde simply wanting what's best for him and for him to be safe. The show never needs to explain why two men are together or why they are such a loving family. Who wouldn't want to be adopted and loved by these two? Number 18. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy Remember back in the day when people wanted a relationship like Joker and Harley? Yeah, that really has not aged well. This pairing has been a fan favorite ever since Batman the Animated Series, from best friends to lovers, starring in the comics before making it to the Harley Quinn Animated Series, with the Season 2 finale the two confirming their relationship with a kiss, on Ivy's wedding day, maybe not the best time, but oh well. This is a ship that has been long overdue for it to set sail and is beyond satisfying. Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy are Gotham's ultimate power couple, and it is not hard to see why. Number 17. Rainbow Dash and Applejack. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Probably one of the most popular ships ever since Season 1 has finally been confirmed. In the season finale, we see our favorite main six reunited, older, more experienced, live life to the fullest, but we also have a little hint when it comes to these two, specifically arguing over who does the chores when they make their introduction. This being a hint that maybe their relationship progressed a little bit in the future is kind of a wink and you might miss it type of thing. It was also confirmed by their shared voice actress, Ashley Bell, who is openly gay herself, that Apple Dash is in fact canon. 
From best friends and rivals to partners having a loyal relationship and an honest life, what is it about Tomboys in Love that feels so wholesome? Number 16. Marshmallow from Bob's Burgers. Never failing to steal the show every time she's on screen. Marshmallow is an openly transgender sex worker who is wholesome and a good friend to the Belcher family. Fishing out some sassy wisdom to the kids and helping Bob out in a pitch, we should all have a friend like Marshmallow in our lives. Number 15. Velma Dinkley and Marcy Fleech. Interesting fact, William Hanna and Joe Barbera confirmed that if Velma was a lesbian, then the show would never have gotten greenlit. Mystery Incorporated was by far the most dark and mature Scooby-Doo series to date, including confirming the relationship of Velma and her former rival turned friend, Marcy, in the series finale. It was hinted here and there in Season 2 that they were a little bit closer than friends, but it was confirmed by the series creator, Tony Cervone, by stating that Velma was actually a closet lesbian until the finale. Now if only we can confirm that Shaggy is a stoner, we'll be set. Number 14. Jackie Lynn Thomas, Star vs. The Forces of Evil Introduced as the crush and eventual girlfriend to Marco Diaz, but when Marco starts to realize his feelings for Star, Jackie breaks up with him. In probably the most healthy way possible. Even still calling Marco her best friend, after spending a semester in France, Jackie is reunited with Marco, showing off her new girlfriend, Chloe, confirming that Jackie is bisexual. Even as exes, she's still very supportive to Marco, letting him know that Star is a very special girl. Jackie Lynn has always been such a cool girl character, and a real supportive partner to whoever is fortunate enough. She's that first school crush that any boy, or girl, would love to fawn over, and it is not hard to see why. Number 13. Lance and George, She-Ra, Princess of Power. In Season 3, we are introduced to Bo's dads, both of which are historians, believing that their son is away at school, when in reality he is off fighting in the war, the very war that they themselves try to separate from. Even after Bo admits to them that he lied to them in order to fight, both of them still love and do care for him. Even though they had limited screen time, they, are, they still left an impact due to how loving and understanding they are shown to be. Lance and George are the kinds of dads that we all wish that we had. Number 12. Princess Bubblegum and Marceline the Vampire Queen from Adventure Time Throughout its run, Adventure Time, it was hinted here and there that our favorite princess and vampire queen were in a past relationship, and even after being separated for centuries on end, they're shown to still very much care for each other. After some much-needed time to grow and change, they start to come back to each other, but it is in the series finale, Come Along With Me, they share a kiss, confirming that they are in fact an official couple, and with distance, distant lands obsidian episode building on their relationship fervor, both coming to terms with their own insecurities and ready to spend an eternity together. Number 11. Todd Chavez from BoJack Horseman This sofa hopper and chilled slacker turned bestie to BoJack is outed to be asexual. This coming out was done in such a natural way that it is beyond endearing. Todd is more than just a compelling and relatable fan favorite character, but also a new dynamic on how an outing can be presented on a cartoon. Especially after landing himself a girlfriend, Maud, who by the series end they are still going strong together, having lived together, and there are hints that there may be a wedding in the future. But either way, Todd Chavez, due to being so naturally outed as asexual, has earned his spot on this list. Number 10. Craig Tucker and Tweet Tweet from South Park. South Park is no stranger to LGBT characters, but this was the first time 
they did this in a respectable way. Starting off by being shipped by the Asian students at their school quickly grew to be probably the best relationship out of all the kids in their year. <laughs> it so far has been the most long-lasting at the very least, with Craig keeping Tweek calmed and grounded and Tweek introducing some excitement to Craig's life. These two balance each other out perfectly. Be honest, even if you aren't a fan of the show, you ship Craig and Tweek together. And it is hard not to see why. These two complement each other perfectly, and they really do have probably one of the healthiest relationships in all of South Park. Number 9. Waylon Smithers from The Simpsons Throughout cartoon history, I don't think any other character had been in the closet quite like Mr. Smithers. Having fallen in love with his boss, the greedy and decrepit Mr. Burns, who even though he never will return his feelings, and often treats Smithers in a poor way, he is shown to appreciate him. Keep standing strong, Smithers. But yeah, I think we can all agree that the boathouse would've been the best time. Aside from that, stay strong, Smithers. You... kinda have to. Number 8. Amity Blight from The Owl House. From bully and top student to fan favorite character. After meeting Luz the human girl, Amity goes from appreciating her as a friend to having a crush on her and at the same time shown to be scared to death if her feelings will be returned or not. Revealed by series creator Dana Terrace to be a lesbian, the Lumidi ship broke the internet. Amity got her spot here due to the label portrayal of a gay teenager unsure if their crush will return their feelings, and like so many of you, I am looking forward to seeing this ship set sail in Season 2. Stay our favorite awkward lesbian, Amity. We're all here for you. Number 7. EJ and Sue Randall from Clarence. Introduced as same-sex parents and never need to explain why two women are married and having a son, this was the most casual way imaginable for a kid's cartoon to show a kid being raised by two moms and it never needing to be addressed or explained at all. EJ and Sue are the embodiment of a power couple, whether it's as dutiful parents or as passionate gardeners, they are the kind of moms that every parent should strive to be. Sure, they can be a little overprotective, a little overeager, but that's just being a mom in a nutshell, am I right? Number 6. Luna Loud from The Loud House. In the episode L is for Love, all of the Loud kids are shown to have crushes. However, for our favorite rock and roller, it's revealed that she has feelings for her friend and bandmate, Sam. But it's revealed at the end of the episode that Sam is actually a girl, confirming that Luna is in fact bisexual. From then on, Luna and Sam are shown to try and take their relationship to the next level, trying new things and getting closer to each other. And like so many of you, I'm looking forward to seeing them sell their relationship and make it official. Keep on rocking, Luna. We will always be your number one fans. Number 5. Nigel Ratburn and Patrick from Arthur. In the season 22 premiere, our first teacher reveals that he is getting married. The students assume he is marrying a woman named Patty, only to realize that Patty is his sister, and in fact he is marrying a chocolate maker named Patrick. For a character who has been around for over two decades and suddenly revealed to be out as gay, Arthur and Buster really set it for the best. It really is a whole new world. This was definitely a concrete episode showing how much progress we've made in the past 20 plus years. And here's hoping it's a milestone for much more progress to come for representation. This was by far a sweet episode. 
Number 4. Korra and the Sami from Avatar The Legend of Korra. Two powerhouse ladies for the price of one. At the end of the series, we see our Avatar holding hands with her best friend, Asami Sato, before the two head off into the spirit world for an overdue vacation. This was one of the first showings of a same-sex relationship, and the fans loved every minute of it. With their relationship being built on in the comics, anybody can tell that these two were meant to be, and here's hoping we'll get to see more of it in the future. Hey, being the Avatar doesn't hurt your chances with the ladies, am I right? Number 3 Garnet, also known as Ruby and Sapphire, from Steven Universe. Garnet isn't just a fusion, she is an experience. Steven Universe paved the way for LGBT representation in children's media. Being made up as a fusion of two gems, Ruby and Sapphire who have literally spent centuries together and are hardly ever seen apart. This was also the first showing of a same-sex engagement and later wedding, another milestone for representation in kid shows, and I'm sure it won't be the last. But they can all cred Garnet and by extension Steven Universe for paving the way and setting the example for a done right and in a respectable way. Stay awesome, Garnet. Stay awesome, Ruby and Sapphire. Number 2. Spongebob Squarepants from, well, Spongebob Squarepants. Bet you didn't expect to see this here at number 2, now did you? The reason why this takes the Silver Mel spot is due to how shocking the reception was. Series creator Steven Hillenberg confirmed that Spongebob is asexual because real sea sponges can produce asexually. Spongebob is shown to have a love for life and his friends, but he doesn't need to be in love with them to show affection. Spongebob doesn't need a love interest and we wouldn't have it any other way. He's still our favorite wacky undersea sea sponge that we have grown up with and sadly probably will for next century. Spongebob is a namestay of our childhoods and it shouldn't be a surprise that he simply has a love for life that we can all appreciate. Number 1. Adora and Catra, She-Ra, Princess of Power. From best friends, to bitter enemies, to lovers. This was a ship five seasons in the making. As mentioned by most of the cast, even when these two were trying to kill each other, there was still a connection underneath it all. Even us as fans can see how much these two still care for each other, even on opposing sides. In the series finale, we finally get the confession, the kiss, and the happy ending. These two deserve each other, finally giving a well overdue pairing that we all wanted from the start. Our favorite ship has set sail and docked in another port. So, how was that everybody? I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. So did I talk about your favorite character? If I didn't, feel free to tell me down below. Give me some suggestions, because believe me, there probably will be a part two to this. <clears throat> but as I said before, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Don't forget to share the love. I hope you guys enjoy your Pride Month. I hope you enjoy your weekend, enjoy your day overall. This is Jeremy Senpai sending his love to you guys. <laughs> um, see you next time, everybody.